The Financial Symphony. Helping you compose a more harmonious financial plan and getting your portfolio in tune. So sit back while we strike up the band. The Financial Symphony starts now. Welcome to the Financial Symphony. I'm Ron Stutz along with Dan Deverna. And uh, Dan Deverna, of course, is your financial consultant at Creative Financial Partners. And the number to call to get in touch is 800-373-9715. That is 800-373-9715. Call that number and you can arrange a time to come in and have a conversation with Dan about your situation. You can also check out his website at dandeverna.com. That's dandeverna.com. But again, that all-important phone number, 1-800-373-9715. Dan, I trust that you've had a great week and ready for another outstanding radio show. Awesome week. Awesome week. Always good to be with you. And I uh, thought maybe we'd lead off today by talking about unique challenges. I know that as long as you've been doing this, as long as you've been helping folks, you've learned uh, a lot about different kinds of scenarios. You've dealt with just about everything. Uh, creating a customized retirement plan for any particular individual can mean addressing some unique challenges. And with each of these scenarios, maybe you can talk about the challenges presented as well as the solutions that you might come up with. Maybe you have a situation where you have a couple and there is a big age gap. One spouse is significantly older than the other. What do you do do to uh, deal with that particular situation? Well, what you're looking for there is longevity. And you, you're factoring in, in some cases, people think, well, I might be retired for, say, 20 years or 25 years. Well, then if they have the spouse, you know, 15 or sometimes 20 years younger, you're really looking at the expectation of having to have that money not be outlived for 40 or maybe 50 years of retirement potentially. And, and it all depends on the situation and everybody's uh, a custom plan and we're building it from the ground up. But I'll tell you, this is a common, common situation or like realistically, there is a lot of situations where maybe the, the husband and wife are very much closer to the same age, but maybe we lose a spouse at a very, very young age. I mean, this happens all the time. I don't want to say every month, but boy, not too far from that. You know, we have husbands passing away and sometimes the some of the wives are living, uh, you know, into their their late 80s and early 90s. And, you know, if you had a husband pass away that was maybe 62 years old or 65, yeah. uh, the expectation is is not you're not going too far to say that the, that the wife might live 20 years without her husband. Yeah. And, and so we need to have a plan in place that accounts for these things. You know, when we look at how much money people are able to live off of and, and we're looking at all of the, the different scenarios, we want to just make sure that our, our financial plan is buttoned up really tight. And that's why we take everybody through that money map process. Well, that's a tough situation, but I know that you're well equipped to deal with that. And you've dealt with that situation a lot uh, during your years as a financial consultant. Uh, what about a case of early retirement where you have a client who wants to retire before the age of 60, let's say? Well, this is a favorite one of mine. I mean, it's a lot of fun to come in as the the financial guy and kind of look like the hero. Most of the people that are capable of retiring at such a young age are doing so because they did such a good job planning. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that's that's a big consideration is their spending habits. So, so you might have somebody that's kind of been squirreling away a lot of money, if you will, or they paid off their house a long time ago and they just don't have much overhead. But one of the things that's very common in the United States is most of our money is taxable. And so we've got money coming in from Social Security, but that's not until we're into our 60s. We've got money coming in from pensions, but oftentimes that's discounted before we reach age 65. We've got money coming in from um, potentially different other different programs, but all of these things come at a later stage. So when you say 60 or younger than 60, you really have to be in the right spot. So we're doing some specific planning to kind of bridge the gap from a retirement of age 53 as one of my younger clients that's retired. And it happened to be my uncle all the way up till if you're talking 58 and we're only looking at four years of bridging that gap to when somebody reaches social security, but we're crunching the numbers. We're making sure that it's that the plan is buttoned up really tight 
And, uh, you know, in most situations, our clients are very comfortable saying, in order to have that extra bit of security, I could easily work another six months. It's not a job that I love doing, but I'd be glad to do it if it made us, made our plan that much more, you know, that much tighter. So it's not uncommon for us to have this scenario, and it's one of my favorite ones to walk people through. You're listening to Dan DeVerna here on the Financial Symphony, and uh, we're talking about unique challenges, and and Dan has dealt with all of these situations. How about uh, when a client has a lack of liquidity? Uh, Perhaps uh, they own a lot of real estate, but have really limited investable assets. Yeah, this is something we run into uh, an awful lot. We have a lot of clients that own apartments, They own, you know, just properties, maybe they're farmers, and they've got a lot of stuff. You look at their balance sheet and it looks really good, but then they go to buy something and they're like, boy, where should I get the money for this? And so a very common situation for us to be looking at pivoting people potentially out of some of these things or to be able to find a way to derive an income stream that's going to produce enough income for us to live off of it. So uh, this is a common situation. Another common situation, many people have got annuities and they, they come to me and they've already, they're, they're into some of these annuities and some of them are great and some of them aren't so great. And they many times did not realize how restricted they were. So we want to make sure that, that people understand the things they have. We want to make sure they understand the rules that they have to go by. And we also want to look at and pay attention to the taxable situations. Everybody's tax situations are a little bit different, and a lot of different moving parts that we see day-to-day have different situations applying to each person and each different um, asset and the way that they were invested, and frankly, how much they paid for them when they paid for them. If you have a unique challenge, whatever your situation is, then uh, why not call Dan DeVerna's office, 800-373-9715. That is 800-373-9715. He's your financial consultant for all of Northwestern Ohio. If you live in Toledo, wherever you are, 800-373-9715. You can come in and discuss your situation. And Dan is a problem solver. We'll get to the situation and uh, find out how to deal with it uh, in your best interest. Uh, How about a case of separate finances, Dan. I know that there are some husbands and wives who keep their money separate, which is certainly not uncommon in second marriages that happen later on in life. How do you deal with that scenario? Well, we see lots of that. Husbands and wives that, that frankly, we see a lot of it with, with second marriages, but we see a lot of it just in I mean, I've seen a lot of this ever since I came into this business, you know, in the late 90s. Mm-hmm. This is something that has happened a lot. And what we the we kind of operate it in the situation of running it in silos. So, you know, the husband runs his book this certain way and the wife runs her book this certain way. And then we will kind of have a plan for consolidation if something would happen to one or the other. And so this is something where we really let the client kind of drive the train and we're there to crunch the numbers, ask the appropriate questions and do the appropriate planning for any of the given scenarios. But yeah, this is a common thing that we run into all the time. We've actually effectively run financial plans separately for husbands and wives before. And which I think to me, uh, you know, seems a little bit, you know, at least at the very least unique. But if that's the way somebody wants to do it, then then that's. Uh, we're completely comfortable doing it that way. Okay, one more situation here, Dan, and this is often a, a really heartbreaking situation, a case of divorce. A, a client feels absolutely shell-shocked and stunned after seeing assets get cut in half because of a divorce, and things obviously aren't working out the way that they had planned for them to work out in the long run. How do you deal with that situation, and how do you make that client feel better? Well, This is a really tough one because many times, you know, I'm seeing clients get divorced at a much later stage than they really would ever think they'd be getting divorced. I mean, many I mean, I've had clients even uh, in the last year that, you know, are in their 60s and getting divorced and they've really accumulated with a plan that they were going to be retiring. And now all of a sudden they realize that, you know, one or both of them realize that this this going forward into retirement is not going to be something we're going to do together. So I'll tell you that that is an extremely tough situation. You know, the courts kind of are going to tell 
tell us the way things are separated and the way things are left is really kind of the way they're left. And so sometimes somebody is going to have to deviate from the plan and they're going to have to work longer than they plan to work or they're going to have to do a job that they didn't necessarily think they were going to have to do. Or, you know, in the best case scenarios, what I've seen is people going into jobs that they enjoy doing and they're more comfortable working those jobs a little bit longer because they like doing them. And that's the best case scenario. But yeah, divorce is tough for everybody. And there, it's a really, it's a touchy subject to say the very least, but we're here to kind of support everybody and to still walk them through that, that down that financial plan. Dan, I know that we have a lot of listeners out there who fit into all those different situations. And uh, if you find yourself fitting into that kind of a situation with unique challenges, uh, then I'm going to give you a phone number in just a moment, a very important phone number, so you can call and get in touch with Dan and arrange a visit at Dan's office. And Dan, what happens when they come in to meet with you? Yeah, so generally what happens is, you're going to call in, you leave a message, and we will get back to you. It's usually me calling you back uh, sometime on Monday, and we'll have a real brief conversation over the phone. Just kind of a sometimes we have people that just have a question or two, and, and sometimes they say, Well, you know, I'd like you to do an a overall analysis of everything I have, or sometimes they want to do, they have one particular thing that they're, that's bothering them. And so we kind of have that casual conversation over the phone which is really no big deal. It's one I've had a thousand times at this point. And then what we're trying to do um, is get a kind of get a vibe for each other. And so we want to have you come into our office. You can kind of, you know, get familiar with where we're at. We're here in Perrysburg, not too far from Levis Commons, behind Ed Schmidt. And we've been in this building for approaching 13 years now. Same building. We just, when we started, there was four of us, and now there's 30 some people that work here. But we'll sit down, you and I, and we'll, we'll get a feel for each other and make sure it just kind of feels right. And it's an extremely casual meeting. The first meeting is really meant just to make sure that we're on the same page and we're compatible. And, and if things proceed from there, then, then they do. And if they don't, you know, and they don't always do that. And sometimes somebody has an agenda and they want something specific to be looked at. And sometimes they're just looking for somebody to bounce some things off of. So whatever we are to each person, the opportunity is that we're here to help the community. We're here to kind of broaden the stroke of the people that we're able to help here in Northwest Ohio. And uh, it's probably the most laid back as you're possibly going to find in the financial services area. And that's at least from what I've been told by my clients that have come in this way. They say, almost always they're saying, geez, Dan, if I knew it was this easy, I would have done this a long time ago. <laughs> a lot of folks feel that way, I'm sure. 800-373-9715. That is 800-373-9715. Call that number, and that will put you in touch with Dan Deverna's office at Creative Financial Partners. Is your financial consultant wherever you are in northwestern Ohio, uh, anywhere in the Toledo area. Uh, Dan's office is in Perrysburg. You can go to the website, if you like, at dandeverna.com. But the most important information I can give you now is that that phone number, 1-800-373-9715. That is 800-373-9715. I'm Ron Stutz, along with Dan Deverna, and this is the Financial Symphony. There's more coming up on today's show after this quick timeout. Much like the musicians fine-tuning the acoustics of their instruments or analyzing the acoustics of a room before a performance, your financial maestro fine-tuned your financial plan to adapt to the ever-changing financial world. Don't settle for an advisor who offers a sales pitch and calls it a plan. Make sure you hit all the right notes in your financial plan. In Northwestern Ohio, call Dan DeVerna at 800-373-9715. That's 800-373-9715. want to see sharp and not be flat in retirement this is the financial symphony welcome back to the financial symphony my name is ryan stutz and i have the distinct pleasure of being with dan deverna on this show dan deverna of course financial consultant with uh, creative financial partners and serving all of the toledo area wherever you are in northwestern ohio you can come in and have a conversation with dan deverna 800-373-9715 
800-373-9715. That's your number to get in touch. Arrange a convenient time and come in and sit down and have an informal conversation, kind of a getting-to-know-you session. No obligation and no cost whatsoever. Dan's willing to commit a, a period of time to you to just sit and talk about things. And if you decide you want to become a client, that's fine. If not, then that's cool, too. You can walk away, but you'll glean a lot of information from your conversation. 800-373-9715. Dan, you know, we talk about numbers a lot on this show. and Let's talk about some demographics today. Uh, I wonder how you interpret certain demographic stats and how they play a role in your planning process. People over the age of 65 currently make up 13% of our country's population. By the year 2030, they're going to make up about 20% of the population. What can we learn from that particular statistic? Well, our population is aging relatively quickly. Um, the percentage of the population that's being supported from the other folks, I guess you will, the working folks, um, on Social Security and Medicare will constantly be increasing. So, you know, in looking around, we have a, a young group of people in their their early 20s, and they are a very large group, but they're not making very much money. So as they start to earn a, uh, earn a little bit higher income, it's going to be very helpful to supporting our systems. But the, the truth is that all of these people are at a, have a higher percentage of people taking out money out of their stock market investments, and that has a big impact on the market long term. It also, one of the things with us living so much longer, and I reference my grandpa every week, you know, at 93 years old, but these folks are needing to get some kind of care. I mean, he is in a unique situation that he lives by himself in a house by himself and is able to drive still. At 93 years old, that's unique. But most people that are in situations at those older ages are needing some kind of care. So there's more and more and more of that. And everybody that's listening right now definitely has a family member and some friends that are being affected by this in some way, shape, or form. Dan, I've said this before, but we got to get your grandfather on the show one day. I know, I know, we have to. He's 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 feeling a little bit under the weather yeah. right now, so we're not we're not doing breakfast. It doesn't sound like this weekend, but uh, we're, we're getting him, nursing him back to health, and then we'll be. You know, I'm hoping to get him on here. I've mentioned it a couple times, and yeah. he's. He's a little hesitant, you know, <laughs> that, that, that he's uh, got the radio voice, but we'll, uh, we're going to keep working on him. Some people just don't like microphones. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, a yeah. 65-year-old male is expected to live to the age of 83, but a 75-year-old man is expected to live until 86. In other words, the older you get, the longer your life expectancy is. For a 65-year-old female, her life expectancy is 85. Uh, but for a 75-year-old woman, it's 88. Why are all these numbers so important? Well, it's really important because of how much longer people's money has to last now. I mean, ba ba bouncing right back to my grandpa again, I mean, he's been retired almost as long as he worked. And so when you have situations like that, you know, first of all, it's a moving target. I mean, that's clear. When you look at age 65, your life expectancy, age 75, your life expectancy, like these are moving targets. And I oftentimes joke with clients. I'll say, well, just tell me when you're going to pass away and I'll just work the numbers backwards. And that, that always gets a chuckle and a giggle. But the truth is that there's going to be one amongst us that's living into, a, you know, over 100. And so um, I just happen to think maybe I'm that guy. I think there's going to be more and more of that. So we have to factor these things in. And in my situation, because I really like what I do for a living, it's not even work to me. I can easily imagine me kind of just working part time or doing this, you know, really forever. I had a client of mine say the other day, well, I'm really planning just to work a half day on the day of my funeral. And I thought that was funny <laughs> because this person loved what they do for work. And, and when you love what you do for work, it's not work. But not everybody has that, that kind of blessing in their life. 800-373-9715 is your number to call to get in touch with Dan's office at Creative Financial Partners. He's your financial consultant wherever you are in northwestern Ohio. Again, 800-373-9715. And uh, a reminder also that the website is a good one, dandaverna.com. Check it out. Uh, average income for people between the ages of 65 and 70 is $42,000. But the average income for people over the age of 80 
is only about 20,000, less than half. Uh, what does that tell us, Dan? Well, it tells us that people are outliving their money for all intents and purposes. They're outliving their savings accounts. They're outliving their 401ks. They're outliving their IRAs. And um, they're spending that money while the, the kind of the getting's good, if you will. And they're, they're spending it, but they're not factoring in the ups and downs and how you're going to have a plan that's going to make it so that you can have a more consistent, predictable income as you get older. When you see that income average of around $20,000, you know that there's a good part of that that's coming from Social Security. In fact, the bulk of that is coming from Social Security. And this just it's not enough money to make someone happy and fulfill all their needs when they're used to a much higher income. So this is definitely something that needs to be paid attention to. And in your planning, because of the longevity and how much longer people are living, this is a extremely crucial part. It is an extremely crucial part. It's very casual and very easy to say, well, I'm sure I'll die by this point. But like that, the truth is that we don't really have a control on those situations. And so we want to make sure that we're not taking this lightly and that we're not just making assumptions that that may not happen. Okay, Dan, uh, one more set of numbers I want to throw at you here, and I can't wait to hear what you have to say. People over the age of 65 generate income in several different ways. 37% of their income comes from Social Security. Income from working represents about 30%. Pensions make up 19%, and savings and investments make up 11%. Interesting that Social Security is the biggest number there. Uh, What's notable about all those numbers? Well, there's... The, the first thing is kind of what we led into with that last question, mm-hmm. and that's that Social Security is a really, really big chunk of this, and it is definitely a, a big part and a, clearly a big percentage of what, what people are doing as far as um, how, they're, how they're living their lives and where their money's coming from. Another thing that we're starting to see is a lot of people are waiting longer and longer to retire. Um, pensions are becoming much less common than they used to be. So we, you know, the days of of somebody that's going to write the check for you forever is just, it's not very common anymore. More and more companies have gone to a 401k platform or sometimes they don't even have a retirement plan. And so that's, uh, that's more of what the normal situation is. And it's also important to generate income from lots of different sources. So to say that you're just gonna have it coming from um, a 401k that you used to have or coming from uh, your pension, you, you know, you want to have some different buckets. And the last thing I'll touch on with this is it's really, really nice to have some money that's not taxable. So most of the money that's that's generated inside of our retirement plans and uh, most of the money that's coming out of Social Security programs now and pensions is taxable income. And so I have lots of people that say, oh, I'd really like to buy this or buy that. And the problem is they're buying this or that with dollars that are not really dollars because after their tax, they are significantly less than $1. Um, that being said, if you're in a situation where you'd like somebody to crunch the numbers, if you're in a situation where you're not exactly sure if you should retire or if you should work a little bit longer, or maybe you've done a retirement plan, but you don't feel completely comfortable with it. We would love to give you a second opinion on that plan. We would love to kind of give you some guidance and to to walk you through the process of our money map process. And it will give you a much better feel for um, how things are looking for you and what your truest plan should be. We've had so many folks come in with the idea of just kind of getting a second opinion or getting a, a first opinion, and they're always so happy that they did it. You know, we don't charge anything for this process, and we put a lot of time in it. So the only thing that we ask is that you're very serious about this this thing because we spend so much energy on the front end of this. And we also know that not everybody's the appropriate person to be a client of ours. So we want this to be a comfortable situation. We want everybody to be a win. This is a win-win situation potentially. And we want everybody to feel like they're getting the, the right end of this. So if you're one of those people that would like a second opinion or would like someone to kind of build out that financial plan, please give us a call right now. 
800-373-9715. I think you'll enjoy getting to know Dan Deverna, and you can tell by listening to Dan on this show that he's not a high-pressure kind of guy. He's not going to try to push any products on you. He's just going to give you some good information, and you can decide what to do with it yourself. You can decide to become a client or not, and there's absolutely no obligation at all. When you come in for a conversation, you're not hiring Dan as your financial consultant. Perhaps you will after that, but call this number and make it happen, 800-373-9715. You can arrange a convenient time to come into Creative Financial Partners and have a talk with Dan DeVerna about your specific situation. He can give you lots of good generic advice here on the radio, but can't really get specific until he knows more about your situation, and certainly you want to know him better as well. You can check out the website at dandaverna.com, and also that number is so important, 800-373-9715. You're listening to The Financial Symphony. I'm Ron Stutz, along with Dan DeVerna. It can take a composer weeks, months, or even years to put together their magnum opus. That's because they take the time to find just the right notes, chords, and melodies. And while a great financial plan won't take years to put together, you should take the same pride and attention to make sure it's the perfect plan for you. In Northwestern Ohio, call Dan DeVerna at 800-373-9715. That's 800-373-9715. It's time for a fireside chat as we get to know your local financial symphony maestro a bit better. This is the Financial Symphony. Ron Stutz along with Dan DeVerna of uh, Creative Financial Partners. And Dan DeVerna, of course, is a financial consultant for so many folks. And I know that there are a lot of people who call every week to get more acquainted with you, to come in and talk with you. And this is our Getting to Know You segment on the show. And uh, in just a couple of minutes here, uh, folks can find out more about you and your personality. Dan, this may seem like a strange question. What is the most physical danger that you've ever been in? Well, I didn't really understand it at the time because it just felt like the thing to do. Mm-hmm. But I'll tell you, I was I was working at Cooper Tire. I would go in at 11 at night until 7 in the morning. And then I would come home and I would take a nap. And then I would go to school because most of my classes that I needed to take. And Cooper was paying for me to go to college. Yeah. So I would go home. I would take a nap. I'd usually wake up uh, somewhere before noon. I'd get to my class at noon. So sometime in the mid afternoon, then I go back home and I take a nap and then I go back to work. You know, we would usually leave somewhere around 10 p.m. to head back to, to work. And I remember I was driving home and I was absolutely exhausted and I had worked six days that week. And it was a Saturday morning and I'm driving home in my Ford Escort. It's a stick shift GT. And um, this thing, I, I'm kind of paying attention, but I'm kind of not. And I'm dozing off and I doze off enough that I go into the other lane and I get clipped by a car Ah. and I end up in the middle and, and I did not realize, I mean, I'm a, you know, this is 20 years ago. So I'm a young kid. I did not realize by not sleeping and paying attention to the things my body was telling me, I just thought I was Superman, you know, and, and I didn't realize what that was. And now I, I think back and those are scary thoughts. Yeah. Um, and I appreciate all that I learned from Cooper and the work experience and how hard I worked and all those things. But I'll tell you, that's probably the scariest thing in the, in the, I just feel so blessed. Thank God that, you know, he was with me there to make sure that, that I got through it. But yeah, not, not an intentional thing or an act that I consciously was doing, but that was probably my, my scariest in the closest physical danger I've ever been in. In retrospect, that's just about the most scary thing I can think of. It it is so miserable when you're trying to keep your eyes open and you're so tired. And, you know, when you're that young, you really don't think anything's ever going to happen to you. And you can, you know, work, you can do whatever you want. And it sounds like you were working a really tough schedule. So, hey, I'm glad you made it. I'm glad you're here today. Me too. (laughs) (laughs) That's our Getting to Know You segment here on the Financial Symphony. Ron Stutz here along with Dan DeVerna.
Flowers grow faster when listening to music, according to the National Institute of Agricultural Biotechnology. In the same way, your portfolio grows faster when listening to the Financial Symphony, probably. Welcome back to the Financial Symphony with Dan Deverna, your financial consultant. I'm Ron Stutz, and Dan has a special guest on today's edition of the Community Connection. Yeah, I'm here with George Gerken, who's uh, the attorney that we actually have in our office, and he's been around Toledo for a long time. Uh, George, welcome to the show. Thanks, Dan. Nice being here. Absolutely. So let's start off with a little bit of background, George, like who you are, um, kind of how you ended up being in the field that you're in, and, and kind of that whole process, if you would. Uh, sure. You know, I was uh, born and raised in Toledo. I uh, went to uh, Central Catholic High School, went to the University of Toledo. Uh, when I graduated, I ended up going to the Toledo Police Department, and I spent 25 wonderful years as a Toledo policeman, ended up uh, retiring after 25 years as a sergeant. Uh, fortunately for me, the last few years I was out at the police academy uh, training all the new recruits and some of the in-service guys, and I had a chance to go to law school while I was on the police department. So I went to night school at the University of Toledo. I had a wonderful time there, graduated, and I was done somewhere around 1996, passed the bar in 97, and I retired from the TPD in 97 and officially opened my law practice in 98. So I've been wow. attorney for almost 20 <laughs> years now. <laughs> that is crazy. If you if you uh, could see George here, you'd you'd realize like the fact that he's been doing this type of stuff for that long seems almost impossible. I mean, he's like in amazing shape. He does triathlons and runs all the time and bikes and swims and all that stuff. So so for those of us that know George, we think of that that kind of longevity in the in the field is pretty awesome. So I, I thought we'd start off, George, with if somebody was looking to to track you down and try to find you, what would be you know, the, the best way to kind of reach out to you. If something that, that we talk about today really hits a hits a note with somebody, what would be the best way for them to reach out to you? Well, I'm very fortunate to be in the uh, same building as you are out here at Creative <laughs> Financial Partners. And so uh, any call to Creative Financial Partners uh, certainly gets routed to my office. Uh, I do have a separate number, uh, area code 419-243-5552. I also have an email at gherkinlaw at gmail.com. Uh, that's probably the two best ways to get a hold of me. If anybody thinks anything I say today is interesting, I'd love to hear from them. I'm sure I could help them. Yeah, awesome. So one of the big things that when I'm going through with my clients, we're, we're organizing their financial junk drawer and we're trying to make sense of everything. You know, one of the big questions that I get in consistently, and it's on my kind of checklist to make sure people have got their estate planning and things in order, but is wills and trusts. And I'm always shocked by how many people have left this kind of undone. And that's the first part. And then the second part is many people don't really understand the differences between a will and a trust. So if you would maybe want to speak to that, that whole idea for a minute, that would be great, George. Sure. Uh, really, when you do what we call estate planning, uh, we're talking about uh, a will-based plan or a trust-based plan. And a lot of people tell me, oh, I don't have enough money to worry about a trust. Uh, I just need a will. And then by the time we're done talking, usually it turns out that the trust really helps their, their situation, their problems much better. Uh, a will, honestly, the, the whole idea of a will is if something uh, happens to you and, or a family member and they have a will, all of their property is designated to go to certain people, and unfortunately, it has to go through probate to get there. That's mm. what a will does. Anything from a will, you typically take it through probate. When we talk to people about wills, uh, I, I like to say the best uh, plan is just to completely avoid probate. And you can do that a lot. Uh, you can set up deeds so there are transfer and death deeds you can put beneficiaries on everything like your bank accounts your savings accounts certainly life insurance policies and things like that would not go through probate but either beneficiaries transfer and death payable on death and we can avoid probate as much as we can the only problem is is then they say well i really don't need a will but invariably 
there's something out there that they forget. Uh, and then uh, whoever's left standing here has to straighten that out with an attorney and go through probate. I'll give you a, a good example of it. Uh, I just had a call from someone who said, hey, my wife's mother just passed away. Uh, dad passed away about eight years ago. Uh, everything should be all set. I'd just like you to take a look at this. Well, unfortunately, when dad passed away, they transferred the house to mom's name. Mom's got a will, which is great, so it's going to go to the kids. But the problem is, is this $100,000 house is going to have to go through probate. And typically, uh, the probate fees are like the first $100,000, at least in Lucas County, is around somewhere around 6% for an attorney fee. Mm. And then another 6% for a fiduciary fee. So here they thought they had everything all set. But they've got a house out there they hadn't really thought about. And now they're losing about twelve grand out of a hundred thousand dollar house, which was completely unnecessary. So that's why not only when you have a will, you have to have a plan how to try to avoid uh, running these things through probate. Yeah, one of the things that we get a lot with people is, but well, you know, I I don't want to spend the money on a trust. But you know, when you I know I I don't know exactly what you charge on a trust, and I know each situation's a little different because they're all customized. But they're not generally twelve thousand dollars. I mean, no, so. <laughs> no, no. Uh, a trust-based plan really is if you want to um, kind of basically it sounds kind of morbid, but if you want to control things from the grave, mm -hmm. all right. And a will, you just give it to them, and they can do what they want. A trust, most people set it up for passing to their children you know, spouse, wife, significant other, they can just get the money and they're okay. But when you talk about kids, a lot of people say to me, oh, I don't care, you know, uh, I've got a life insurance policy for my children, um, $100,000 policy. And I said, that's great, boy, that child who's eight years old now is gonna get $100,000, but they can't get it because they're a minor. Mm -hmm. It's gotta go into probate, into an account, supervised by a guardian and then when they're 18 they get whatever's in there and that's a lot of money for an 18 year old oh boy <laughs> so, yeah. so uh, most of the discussions I have regarding uh, trust is just because they want to protect their children and it's you don't have to have a ton of money just life insurance in and of itself or retirement fund or something along those lines a lot of people say, yeah, you know, I want the kids to get it, but maybe a little later if something happens to both of us. Yeah. Another situation which has, you know, become more and more common, I would say, that, that we've, you know, worked together on, George, is somebody where maybe there's a, a, a second family, you know, they have, uh, you know, a husband and wife that were maybe one of them or both of them were previously married, and now they've come together. And so the way that things flow naturally or the way and the way that they may want them to to look may be very very different oh yeah absolutely uh, we call it the blended family and uh it can be done many different ways uh you have uh, a, a widower uh remarries has a child with a new wife but has children from the previous marriage or you get a husband and wife married who have kids from previous marriages for both of them and dan i can tell you I, I can't tell how many times I hear from the kids after the fact, well, wait, all of that money that my dad had is going to go to his wife and none of it's coming to us. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, it may sound bad, but you have to plan for those sorts of things. Sure. And not every second marriage is uh, goes well with the kids from the first marriage. Let's just put it that way. Sure. And absolutely. so there may be a contest in, in probate. They may contest the will. Uh, if you set it up in a trust, you can make sure that both sides of the family are fairly treated. And most of the time we have, we have husbands and wives agreeing that their kids uh, need to be looked after just as much as the other party. So that, that, that happens a lot, especially in our society today. Yeah. Yeah. And he, you know, I think of a situation that we had not too long ago where, you know, a, a husband and, and wife had very clear expectations of what they wanted to have happen. And unfortunately, not too long after that discussion and the planning was done, 
you know, th- unfortunately, this gentleman uh, had cancer that nobody really knew about. And within just a few months, it, you know, he had passed away and I'm very, very blessed, I feel, that, that we were able to kind of follow through on what his wishes were because had we not done that, uh, the situation would have been an awful lot different. I mean, it really would have been gone completely the other way in a way that he didn't want things to go. So what I love about the trust situation is that it really gives you much more command and control of it. But um, people oftentimes think of that upfront cost of a trust as being the expense. The, the truest expense that I've seen is is the, the time, the energy, and the money that's being spent uh, going through that probate process and the frustration of it. Oh, you that's agree? true, Dan. Uh, years ago, um, 10 years ago even, uh, trusts were viewed as a tax avoidance uh, just because the uh, the estate taxes, either in the federal government or the state of Ohio, uh, were such that anything above a certain amount you're going to have to pay taxes on. So a lot of people thought, well, I'll just avoid the government by putting this into a trust. Well, that's not the main reason anymore because Ohio doesn't have a an estate tax and the, the federal estate tax is up, I think, 5.3 million. So if you're listening to me and you have more than 5.3 million, please contact somebody. If you have less, it's the taxes really aren't your main focus on this. It's how is the money going to get to the people that I want it to and uh, am I making it easier for them after I pass, which is uh, gives a lot of people a lot of peace of mind. So those are some really timely subjects. Is there on a kind of on a parting note where there are there any assumptions or things that you would say that people maybe leave undone or they assume it's taken care of or anything that any missteps that you see commonly that that we could just kind of help people with before we go today? Sure. I think one of them is a health care power of attorney. Uh, people don't realize how important that is. Now, Husband and wife, obviously, uh, under HIPAA, you can get some information. Most everybody get it. But for those people that have kids that live elsewhere, let's say a child goes to college mm-hmm. and they go down to Ohio State and they're in Columbus and something happens down there and the parents get the notice and they call the hospital. And the hospital says, I'm sorry, I can't tell you anything. Um, this is an adult. I need a release. It's very frustrating. Wow. Most often, you can kind of get through the layers, but technically speaking, it's a fight to do so, and a simple health care power of attorney would be great. Along with a living will, those two kind of go hand in hand, and a living will just says, look, if I'm terminal, I'm going to die, don't do any extraordinary measures. Uh, The classic case of that one was uh, Terry Schiavo down in Florida, where her husband after she was in a coma, wanted to pull the plug, and the parents didn't. Mm -hmm. That poor girl spent almost five years in a coma waiting for the court system to try to uh, figure that out because she didn't have a living will or a health care power of attorney. So I think those two things are important in everybody's life. Wow, awesome. Well, George, if you wouldn't mind uh, one more time, tell us how we can, if something that you said struck a chord, tell uh, uh, our audience here a, a way they could reach out to you. Sure. Uh, just uh, call George Gherkin. Uh, the office number is 419-243-5552. Or email me, and that's probably a great way to do it, uh, is gherkinlaw, G-E-R-K-E-N-L-A-W, at gmail.com. Yep. Excellent. Thanks a lot, George. We appreciate your time and your information. Have a great rest of your day. And thank you, Dan. Thank you. And that's our Community Connection, Dan DeVerna with George Gherkin, special guest. And we'll have more coming up on the Financial Symphony in a moment. Prior to a performance, it's essential that all musicians get in tune. Without proper tuning, the performance will suffer and the sound will... It won't be music to your ears. Tuning in the financial world is equally important. Make sure your financial plan is pitch perfect by calling today. In Northwestern Ohio, call Dan DeVerna at 800-373-9715. That's 800-373-9715. The Financial Symphony is reaching its crescendo. Your local financial maestro is coming up next. 
Welcome back to the Financial Symphony. I'm Ron Stutz along with Dan Deverna. DanDeverna.com is his website. If you'd like to check him out, you can get an 8x10 color photo of Dan Deverna, suitable for framing. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, the most important information I can give you is the phone number, 800-373-9715. Folks call in every week after the show, during the show. Doesn't matter. Go ahead and call right now if you like. 1-800-373-9715. Dan, as always, we've had some great questions. Questions come in on the request line, and we have a question today from Doug, who lives in Toledo. Doug says, I feel good about the amount that we have in savings relative to the income that we'll actually need in retirement. However, I'm worried about nursing home costs and don't really have a good feel for how to plan for that. What's your normal approach when you uh, get ready to plan for that situation? Well, I would tell you this, Doug, there's no normal approach anymore we probably have four or five different strategies that we use. And and I'll tell you that people that say, well, I'm not really that worried about that and they're not going to plan for it. That too is a plan because the plan is as something that happened to my family, my grandparents on my father's side ended up losing their house and their property that had the business that my grandfather ran most of his life and career. And also the business that my father ran on that property was all lost because of a long-term care situation. So um, not to apply any pressure, but I'll tell you, as somebody that has seen that happen before I was doing this line of work, it is a real serious thing. And so the idea of buying long-term care insurance is the, it was a typical way that we were doing this when I entered this business. The problem is the cost of long-term care has gone up so much that now the cost of the insurances has gone up exponentially. Uh, We also see life insurance policies that are hybrid policies. So they don't just serve as having a death benefit, but they serve as having a living benefit that can help supplement some of these costs if needed. Uh, We have many insurance or investment products that will give guaranteed incomes that you can't outlive, but will also have riders that will supplement some of those costs that go into um, paying for long-term care And then we also have people that have to pay it out of cash flow or are doing planning specifically to have assets out of their name so that the government does not come take their stuff. So all of these are different plans. I hate to throw them all out at you that quick. If you have a specific question about any of these or you'd like to know how the plan might work best for you, please give us a call. Doug, I hope that helps. But uh, again, the best thing to do is to, is to give Dan DeVerna a call and arrange a time where you can come in and talk about this, and he can be much more specific as it relates to your situation. Our next question today comes from Leanne in Moline. Uh, Leanne says, I've heard differing theories about the idea of using life insurance as an investment. What's your take on that? Well, I think there's only two reasons that you buy life insurance. You either owe somebody or you love somebody. And then I would add this third thing, and I have a lot of life insurance on myself that I'm using not just as um, life insurance that if something would happen to me for my family, but also as an accumulation vehicle. And so I don't think it's the best investment right off the bat. It's not the first place you should put your money, but for somebody that's disciplined and somebody that has a long-term plan, it's a very tax advantaged vehicle, but it has to be for the right person. It's not for everybody. And it's definitely something that most of my clients have never understood it until we sat down and we've talked about it once or twice or three times. Because um, as a first investment, again, I'd pick something else. But once we've done things like Roth IRAs and we've done other investments, this is a crucial element to providing that tax-free bucket of money that many people are looking for in retirement. I mean, after you make a certain amount of money, and we have lots of clients that make less than this, but lots of clients that make more, between $120,000 and $180,000, they're not able to do things like Roth IRAs anymore. So then they're looking for the next best thing. And so this is one of those kind of products that we've plugged in, and it's really done a great job as the kind of Swiss Army knife of investments for us. 
Great questions on today's show that have come in, but uh, if you're listening to the show today, you may have a myriad of questions, and if you'd like to sit down and talk about those with Dan Deverna, 800-373-9715 is your number to call to make it happen. You can arrange the time. Just call that number, leave your contact information. A member of Dan's team uh, will get back with you, and you can come in and have a talk, 800-373-9715. One more question uh, from our request line today, Dan. And this is from Catherine in Bowling Green. Catherine says, at this point in my life, I'm not that interested in making my portfolio a lot bigger. I just don't want to lose what I already have. Do you think that's short-sighted on my part? Well, Catherine, um, I remember the good old days down in Bowling Green, Ohio, when we used to hang out at the uh, Dairy Queen there and and, uh, um, try to kind of talk to all the college kids that we thought were so cool when I was back at Eastwood back in the day. Um, well, sorry to go down memory lane, but those were fun, <laughs> those were fun days. I'll tell you, um, at this point in your life to be saying that, you know, I don't exactly know the, what point in your life you're at, so it depends. But I'll tell you, um, you want to make sure something that you're communicating to your financial person about this type of a thought process. And if you don't have a financial person, you probably should have one because as our clients get a little bit older, they, they sometimes don't realize that all of the products we've used to accumulate assets are not necessarily the same things that we would use on the distribution part. So there's so many things that can be out there that can give you guaranteed income, that can make sure that you're getting some upside potential, but uh, having guarantees and promises. And we also know, unfortunately, that the banks just aren't doing that much as far as CDs and savings rates. So people have needed to look elsewhere. So for someone to say, Catherine, I am really not that interested in making a bunch more money, it usually just tells me that what they're really interested is not losing much. If they knew they could make a lot, but they didn't have to risk it, they would probably sign up for that. But we all know that that's not out there. So if you're looking for one of these kind of these these situations where you're not sure exactly what you want or you kind of know, well, yeah, what Dan said there is fairly obvious. I think I'm in that camp. You know, we have so many people that as they get to those later stages where they're either retired or looking closely at retirement, they want to have somebody to take a look. They want to have somebody pop the hood. They've read the statistics that that the much higher percentage of people that are on the successful side of the fence that have an above average income in retirement are working with somebody that does this every single day. You know, I love the idea that you can hop on YouTube and that you can do a little bit of research, but the truth is that you're never going to be able to change your brakes as well as somebody that changes brakes on cars every single day, all day. And I work this job for probably 60, 70 hours a week. And I've been doing it like that for the last, you know, I guess it's now 17 years. I've been doing this since the late nineties. And now just my own staff and the guys that do research that are way smarter than me and the people that help build our plans and our staff people, um, you know, it is, we're so, so blessed to be able to help all of our clients. And we all kind of plug in and we have our roles. And to think that somebody really thinks that they could potentially outsmart that system, um, you know, I think it's kind of crazy. And we love helping people. We're very passionate about it. And it's really why we're on the radio. So if you'd like to, you know, kind of be a part of this group that's working for you and be a part of the team and have somebody that really helps, we would love for you to call in right now. If you want to get in touch with someone who lives, eats, breathes, sleeps this business all the time and, and really has uh, very acquainted with uh, all different scenarios, then you need to come talk with Dan Deverna. And the way to make that happen is calling 800-373-9715. Call that number toll-free from wherever you are in uh, northwestern Ohio, and you can come in. You can arrange a time to come in that's convenient and sit down and just have a conversation. There's no high pressure. There's no obligation, and it's not going to cost you a penny. 800-373-9715 is your number to call. One more time, 800-373-9715. Be sure and check out Dan's website as well, dandaverna.com. Dan Daverna at Creative Financial Partners. One more time on that phone number, 800-373-9715. Dan, it's been a pleasure being on the show with you today, and I know you're going to have an outstanding week. Good to be with you. Join us again next time for the next edition of The Financial Symphony with Dan DeVerna.
Securities and investment advisory services offered solely through Emeritus Investment Corporation, member FINRA, SIPC. Representatives of AIC do not provide tax or legal advice. Please consult your tax advisor or attorney regarding your situation.